Okay, let's have a profile, you lot. Right. Who's going to be the first one of 2012? Well, it's one of the truly great foreign players to have plied his trade in the Premier League and considered to be Chelsea's greatest ever player. It's Gianfranco Zola. Aye. Oh, you went all John Motson. Oh. I thought you were going to say Nigel Spackman. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's Eddie Newton. <laughs> <laughs> it's Eddie Newton. It's not Eddie Newton. It's Gianfranco Zola. Yeah, it is Gianfranco Zola, the little magician. Yeah. Hugely popular wherever he's gone, especially at his beloved Chelsea. Born on the 5th of July, 1966. One year, no more, no less, yeah. before the summer of love. That which summer. would have been in full swing in July. Yeah. yeah. At, yeah. at some point in this profile, there's somebody going to say, too small to play football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still too small to play football. <laughs> Actually <laughs> incorrect. He's about, he's about five foot six. When you put that in perspective, exactly the same height as my mother, which is just strange. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he could play the childhood Zlatan. Yeah, he could. Yeah, he could. Excellent. Yeah, oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he is from Sardinia. A lot of the Sardinians are quite small. Um, yeah, they're notably small, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, so, hence he got the name The Little Magician. Um, at the age of 18, he signed his first professional contract uh, with local team New Orese. Um, 18 years old. Quite I hope he had someone look over it as well. I think yeah. so. Uh, over his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, How short would he be when he was 18? Well, probably about the same. Yeah, yeah maybe. Thinner. Yeah. Uh, thinner. He's not particularly big now, is he? No. But, uh, I know what you're saying. I'm not sure these are the hard facts we no. need to be looking uh, at. Jim Fragazola, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> is short, was once even shorter. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Possibly thinner. What's yeah. a fetus? Yeah. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he played there for a few years in uh, the uh, lower leagues in Italy. Moved up to Serie C in 1987, playing for side Torres. Uh, he was playing more regularly now and uh, his quality wasn't overlooked because he was catapulted not literally up the division could have been, to, could have been to Serie A when Napoli signed him in 1989 and they were a decent side mm, then they had a pretty significant player at the time Kareka right? Yeah, Kareka. <laughs> oh, I love Kareka. Decent. Un underrated Kareka. Yeah, but you're probably referring to Daniel Fonseca. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it fair to say that when he sl slotted in next to Fonseca, yeah. it was almost like he was the player or one of the players that helped them sort of get over? Well, maybe they haven't re ever really got What him. name were you about to say? Diego Maradona. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he, he played for them. Yeah. Yeah, but he was one of the players who sort of helped them get over. He did, yeah. yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, playing alongside the, the likes of Kareka and Maradona. Um, for a young lad who's come up from <laughs> effectively the third division if you into that. Team. If you are going to watch your team <laughs> and up front you've got Maradona Correcca with Zola just behind, mm. you take that all day. Yeah. And they did. They yeah. loved it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Oh, they, they permanently look back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, absolutely incredible. Coming from those lower leagues all the way up. Um, look, DJ Campbell did it. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. Well, mm, not even <laughs> arguably. Um, Zola won Serie A at, at Napoli, and uh, would, but more importantly to the, the man's career, would learn a lot playing with Maradona course uh, apparently the two spent hours on the training ground practicing free kicks together mm. which is a lovely image it, it, Zola feels like a link between that last generation of Maradona's generation and sort of the one that we grew up with yeah you know? it's nice that such a sort of iconic player was was you know was such a young player alongside such another iconic player mm. yeah. imagine how much you'd have learned I mean it's, yeah. you can't think of a better teacher for that sort of player that's well. right That's right. apparently the two would have uh, penalty competitions with their weaker feet as but well. they're going all night <laughs> yeah. just, all night can you imagine like any, everyone volunteering I'll go in goal for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to see the two little men having, yeah. having pop shots at you uh, Zola <laughs> also remembers an occasion when Napoli were playing Pisa in the Italian Cup and he said that Maradona gave him the number 10 jersey and, and took the number 9 and Zola said for me it was the most beautiful thing I could ever imagine you know Maradona letting me play in the number 10 shirt imagine my confidence and th th there is talk of I don't know how um, true this is but they're kind of an understudy kind of feel to Maradona and Zola mm. you know I mean Maradona was probably you know Maradona never, never <laughs> forgets his lines yeah. hey, uh, hey. Very good. <laughs> but I th I, you know Maradona did go off the rails a little bit as we know at Napoli and, and, and so on and so forth And but, but Zola as you said Luke you know he, he kept going and, and, and they, they loved him they, they, they really did well, uh, it, was, it was stupid and they let him go to Palmer well I think it was because of I think it was the funds and all the team mm. needed to, to, yeah. to raise some money he went to Parma where he teamed up with Faustino Aspria Carlos Rolin was there as well if I remember yeah. rightly mm. oh, was that then was at, it? at one yeah. point they were all there together I think then was that when they had the top that said Parmalat yeah yeah, well, yeah. Uh, yeah around that sort of because you've had one like that didn't they they had Danone 
Yeah, yeah, that's that, aren't they all yoghurt manufacturers? That was later, that was later. That was later. <laughs> yeah, Muller. Um, but yeah, uh, I like this. Apparently Zola took uh, Asprey fishing once, but only <laughs> once, as he said. I did take him fishing once. Only once because of how he behaved. <laughs> Put the gun down. <laughs> yeah. He broke all my fishing rods and made a big mess in my boat. <laughs> Broke uh, his fishing rods. When, he, when he says he made a big mess in my boat, yeah, yeah. goodness knows what leaps to mind. <laughs> I wish I was there. He caught the fish with his hand and pulled them apart. Yeah. Jeez, I see it every time I close my eyes. It's yeah. just different class, isn't yeah. it? A mess in my boat. <laughs> oh, lovely banter. <laughs> shut up. Um, uh, I think I'm right in James saying Corden that. Was shut there. up. <laughs> I think I'm right in saying Zola uh, previously held the free kick scoring record in Serie A, which I'd imagine that is no. <laughs> Mean feet. No, that that no. league has had some free kick takers. They love a dead ball. They do love a dead ball. Uh, he did win the UEFA. <laughs> <laughs> he did win the UEFA Cup with Palmer in '95. Um, they beat Arsenal, didn't they? Uh, yeah. They lost to Arsenal in the Cup. No, of course, cup yeah, no. In '94. Oh, okay, yes, because they were. Um, the holders in the final when I was right. Uh, Alan and Smith were the holders in the final. That's right. Off a bit then. Uh, Zola did play at the World Cup. I should have said actually in '91, uh, playing for Napoli, he got his uh, first cap for Italy. Um, but uh, in '94, he was uh, called up to the World Cup squad in America. Only briefly, he came on against the Argentina in the second round. He was sent off quite harshly, I think. I might mm. be the only sending off. In I remember it being a ridiculous sending <clears> off. In fact, yeah, I think the little man dropped to his knees as well when he was sent off in, in typical Italian fashion. You know, back in Serie A, though, he was uh, making his name real, really as a, as, as a playmaker, a goal scorer, uh, all those kind of things that we we now know him. Um, Carlo Ancelotti, manager of Parma at the time, didn't really see. Him fitting into his system so he was sold to Chelsea in, in 96 for four and a half million pounds uh, he did play at Euro 96 uh, that summer the Italians went out in the first round he missed a penalty in a nil-nil draw with Germany which proved to be crucial he had a funny international career Zola a lot of Italian players did when they, they were almost sort of like they, they disappeared off the international radar when they left Italy basically they, Italian I don't know if it's still the same now but they were traditionally quite myopic when it comes to sort of picking international yeah. players but also though, there were so many players at the time oh, the likes of Baggio yeah. And, yeah. and so on and so of course. Um, but uh, he did score a, a famous goal for Italy against England in a 1 0 win in the uh, which was it, World Cup 98 qualifier. Yeah. Uh, but it, and the, do you know the amazing thing about that was he scored and it was such a huge game that even when he came back to the Premier League he was still very popular because mm. that's the kind of classic things that football fans would, would turn against him oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, I think his last game for Italy might have been the nil-nil uh, with England in, in Rome in Rome yeah that was uh, the return fixture of that, that game was, yeah, called yeah. the free kick the first one yeah that's right. It wasn't a free kick. It was uh, sorry from, from open play. Sorry, yeah. But yeah, uh, now Chelsea, we've got there uh, an immediate impact. Mm. <laughs> I think. I think we could agree. What year did he sign? Did he know? was in in ninety six. And he became one of the players who really helped the Premier League reach the kind of levels it is yeah. at today. Won the Football Writers Player of the Year in his first season in the Prem. Mm. That is different class, isn't it? <laughs> um, and he was an absolute joy to watch week in, week out scoring uh, fantastic goals. He said the defences in England back then were not as tight as they were in Italy, which gave him more room to, to weave his magic. One such brilliant moment was against West Ham where he twisted Julian Dix into all sorts of shapes. <laughs> you remember that? Dix was obviously Which quite is a, a dangerous thing to do. Yeah, yeah. well, well Dix. He'll smash a, your fishing rod. <laughs> <laughs> when Julian Dix finally on Tangles himself he's going to go up <laughs> do you remember that one when he, I think he actually muscled Dix off the board Dix was a real hard man and yeah. people yeah. were calling for him for England caps yeah. uh, Zola made such a mug out of him and then and the goal I particularly remember from Zola was um, against Manchester United where he ran down the right side put Dennis Irwin on his ass, made Pallister look really silly like an old <laughs> yeah. man and, and just hit the ball past Schmeichel who just stood there and yeah. was like what didn't even seem to <laughs> notice it yeah. it was like Schmeichel was standing there looking at his defenders being pulled around going who do you think you are? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we saw this, uh, the, the form of years of the Premier League was dominated by um, players like that um, like King Clazza like uh, Giannini yeah. or those yeah, tiny little yeah, yeah, players yeah, yeah. but Zola Jose was Domingue. just the, <laughs> you know they were, he, he was just the king mm. yeah. of the jinky jinkster <laughs> Spe speaking I mean you touched on it a little bit there and, and you touched on it a bit earlier as well I actually had a job in my second year of uni oh well done and uh, working for <laughs> <laughs> Some of us haven't had a job since, have they? Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was uh, the job was actually working as a runner for Chelsea TV. Oh, that's I remember you were there. And yeah. it was in it was when Zola was there. And uh, talking about his strength and stuff, mm. I, and I, what I used to do in the morning and sort of around lunchtime-ish when there was a home game, I used to go around um, just. K 
cable bashing, helping out. And he spent quite a lot of time in, actually in the stadium itself. Right. And once or twice, Zola was there uh, practicing free kicks. I never. First of all, one thing I want to say: the one word that immediately springs to mind is thighs. Yeah, the thighs <laughs> yeah. on the man. That's true. Were a joy to be. His thighs should be in this Hall of Fame on their own. <laughs> right. well, secondly, he was. I remember. I know it's ridiculous because he's you know, a world class footballer. But I remember seeing him curling the ball hmm. in the sort of top corner or hitting the bar or whatever. He was curling the ball harder. Much harder than I could ever absolutely smash it as hard as on I the could. volley. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> yeah. Was curling it. Yeah. Well, there them. was that one glorious free kick. I mean, he oh, a bastard for a free kick. Scored so many for Chelsea uh, alone, and it was the one at Stamford Bridge. I forget who the opposition were, and it was um, you know facing the goal to, to the left of the goal, mm. and it was keeper side, and he curled it right over. Beautiful. I think it went in off the post, top top corner. Mm. Absolutely delicious. It's, it's when players can do that with their instep rather than. The outside of their yeah. foot, that you know, are they really powerful? Oh yeah, quality. yeah, absolutely. Um, but anyway, listen to sum up in the 2001-2002 season. Jan Frank I had a job. Definitely <laughs> had the biggest stars at Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget Desai because he was there. Oh yeah, that's well. true. That's true. But uh, yeah, Zola. I think another thing that he was he was such a likeable guy. Oh yeah, mm. and played with a smile on his face. A smile on his face. Um, He's very, very genuine Quite shy as well Off the field uh, I think But he was strong as an ox You talk about that Julian Dixit incident he, he was almost like A bit of messy about him Small yeah. 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 Diminutive But a big Powerful core strength, And well you know. built as well Yeah absolutely uh, To remember, scale Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scale Do you remember the, the, the back heeled Sort of flick volley uh, oh, Against Norwich, Norwich From the corner Probably his best goal Do you think In the oh, FA Cup Brilliant Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Absolutely Ranieri said something Really odd about that Delish did he say something like he is a magic? He was he is a magician. So and magicians have to try things. Well, we'll end <laughs> with that. Really what you mean by that? We'll end with that quote. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um, uh, he scored the goal for the uh, for Chelsea against Stuttgart in the Cup Winners' Cup when he uh, he came on um, and uh, it was nil nil at the time. He, he had a bit of a groin strain, so he didn't start the game. Came on and I think it was his first touch or second touch or something like that. Less than a minute anyway. He knocked over the ball was knocked over the top. Half volley, top corner. Pop bang, lovely. Cup's theirs. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and he won the FA Cup twice uh, with Chelsea as well, the League Cup, Super Cup as well. And and th- this team was the, the sort of the precursor to the Abramovich era, really, yeah. in the Mourinho's. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is when they were really sort of a kind of vibrant attacking force. Well, well, that's right. Yeah. Watch. I mean, we all know what a, what's it, Ken Bates is, you know. So for, for him to say this uh, about Zola, he's been a joy to watch and a great influence both on and off the field. We owe him a hell of a lot of thanks. That's, yeah, well, that's true. Well, but Ke- yeah. from Ken Bates, <laughs> you know. the best ever player. Yeah, well, no, I'm just you know what Ken Bates. Ken is Bates, like. <laughs> <laughs> who conducted this poll? Yeah, Ken Bates. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, in 2003, when when he left Chelsea, um, Papa Smurf prick. He yeah. was yeah, he was <laughs> voted the, the club's greatest ever player, and uh, no one's worn. I think I'm right. So no one's worn the number 25 jersey, which was his number at Chelsea since he's uh, he's left. And he went back to his homeland to fulfil his promise of finishing his career at his hometown club, uh, Cagliari. He's loved for that as well. I yeah, bet he is. I bet that, he yeah. is. And I, th- I think he gained promotion from Serie B to to Serie A. And do you remember when that happened? That was just before Abramovich took over. Yeah, and Abramovich the first thing he tried to do was buy him back yeah and there was a rumour he tried to obviously this must be rubbish but apparently he tried to buy Calgary just to, like, to sort of just give him back yeah <laughs> the city yeah. Yeah. Uh, he retired from professional football in 2005 he later came back to him of course to manage West Ham which started reasonably well but then ended up in, unfortunately for Zola being sacked um, but it's a player as we, as we know him best and uh, he was inducted into the uh, English Hall of Fame in 2006 awarded an honorary OBE in 2004 which is one hell of an achievement. I can remember when he was managing West Ham. I, I, I can remember one of the players saying that you know, he's still the best player in training. He's, he's still brilliant. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, he bought a bar in Sardinia, uh, in his hometown. And this, uh, his dad was a truck driver, and he basically said, "Dad, get me on the bar." <laughs> <laughs> so his dad became uh, the, the, the barman there. Sell the truck, though. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah get the, get the money for that. <laughs> uh, we'll end on on that uh, Claudio Ranieri quote where he says Gianfranco tries everything because he is a wizard, and the wizard must try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Here comes Gianfranco Zola to the, to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> 